Welcome back everyone. Remnant from Hell, patch 1.0.4, has finally been released. With it comes a myriad of additions, balances, bug fixes, and reworks. In fact, there are so many changes that we don't even have a comprehensive set of patch notes yet. So for today, I'll quickly cover all the main changes. This update brings a heap of new weapons, armors, and trinkets. To be exact, there are 7 new weapons, 4 new trinkets, and 2 new armor sets. Might I mention, at cheaper Dark Sliver costs too. No longer will you have to pay an upwards of 30 to 40 slivers for a weapon. This helps reduce the grind needed to obtain everything in both shops. All the new additions will get their own videos, but for now I'll briefly go over each of them. Starting off with the guns, we have the Ashen Mangrove. This rot lever action shotgun is a medium range long gun that deals some decent damage. Its mod fires a bolt that weakens an enemy's resistance to rot damage by 15%. It pairs pretty well with the next weapon, the Blightmaker. This rot SMG is a slower firing but harder hitting weapon when compared with the vanilla SMG. Its mod fires rot darts that apply stacks and impact with enemies. If a single target receives multiple stacks, a 10 meter wide rot damage blast is set off. This blast has good staggering power for crowds. Vulcans and Cryogen Blast both work wonders at making every enemy hit by the blast affected by their downsides. Up next is the Zeta Ray. This frost pocket laser functions similarly to the Beam Rifle. It utilizes the damage buff of the old Beam Rifle, in that it buffs the damage of everything else that deals damage to the target you're aiming at, including other Beam Rifles. Its mod currently applies stacks of frostbite to the beam's attacks. The last long gun is the Greaser. This flame rifle functions similarly to the Eye of the Storm in terms of performance. With 30 meters of effective range, you'll be sniping targets with ease using this beast. The mod it comes with launches a pot that covers enemies in oil within 8 meters of the splash. When enemies drenched in oil take fire damage, they explode, dealing damage to themselves and those around them. This can lead to some insane moments where you wipe an entire group of enemies with a single ignite. When paired with the Vulcans or Cryogen Blast, you can chain explosions together or better your crowd control. An awesome new rifle which I can't wait to play with more. Coming up we have the three new melee weapons. Starting off we have Torben, a shock axe taken from one of Yasha's Brutes. It's a slow but hard hitting weapon with a neat mod. Upon landing a charge attack, you'll be granted a 5 second buff that summons lightning on enemies around you. These function identically to the Stormcaller strikes which can stagger enemies and set up overloaded stacks. In big groups of adds, this really comes in handy with dispersing them. A great new shock melee option. Next up we have the Mantis Claw. This scythe launches out corrosive balls on its charge attacks. Similar to the Iskal Queen's attack, these also leave behind puddles that deal damage to enemies standing inside them. Just like the Hero Sword, they do cost stamina to launch. However, they are actually pretty easy to land at distant targets. In melee range, they actually deal incredible damage if you land both the projectile and the charged swing on the same enemy. You can absolutely melt through elite enemies with the right moves. Just be sure to watch your stamina consumption. You can very quickly run out and be unable to dodge attacks up close. This is definitely my new favorite scythe to use of the three now. Finally for the melee weapons, we have the Gore Sword. As the name implies, this is Gore Fist's Great Sword. This absolute beast of a weapon is the hardest hitting melee option in the game now. Although its strength does come at the cost of having a very slow swing speed, running a melee attack speed trinket or two can help mitigate the downside. Although you may wish to run one of the melee charge attack based options, this is because every single attack by the Gore Sword counts as a charged one, meaning that every swing will be benefiting from the hard charger trait and any associated activations you have via them. On top of all that, there's the weapon skill. Barbs of the Beast. Every melee swing gives you a short lasting, slightly weaker version of Mental Thorns. When combined with the normal mod, you become incredibly tanky against melee damage. Critical hits are absolutely devastating with this sword. With one of my setups, I was hitting nearly 4k damage on certain swings. Overall, an amazing new melee weapon, which I am sure many of you will enjoy using. Up next, we have the two new armor sets introduced in this patch. The first of the two being the Rhino set. This is a lightweight set that starts off with a lower amount of armor. Its passive bonus gives you 25% extra movement speed. Its main effect is increasing your armor value on melee strike, while reducing your movement speed and evade speed for a few seconds. 
With the entire set equipped, you'll be gaining 100% more armor effectiveness, but lose your passive movement speed bonus and gain a penalty to your evade speed. The point of the set is to melee tank. The bonus movement speed is there to get you to your target quicker. Once you're close, you'll be able to tank the damage that yields you easier. Should they die or reposition, the armor's effect ends and you'll be able to sprint to your next location without movement speed or dodging penalties. Since the set is a light one, you'll be able to utilize light rolls as you close the distance should you be dealing with ranged enemies. It's an interesting concept, and one I'll be looking forward to covering in its own video. Next up, there is the Rough Rider set. This gunslinging set focuses on quick swapping and mod spamming. The passive bonus grants a 50% faster weapon swap speed, and you're going to be needing that bonus, as the main effect of the armor is based around swapping your weapons. Every time you swap your weapons, you gain a stack. These stacks increase your range damage, mod damage, and mod casting speed. Stacks only last 3 seconds, and tick down one at a time. As long as you keep swapping, you can put out some pretty good damage. I highly recommend running Provisioner's Ring for the passive reloading, as you're going to want it for all the swapping. It might take some getting used to, but once you get into the habit of swapping, mod casting, and managing your resources, you can really make this set shine. This is the set I look forward to mastering in the future, especially when I get around to making a video for it. Last up are the new trinkets. Starting with the necklaces, we have Blood Oath. This trinket fills our magazine with 6% of our total reserves on ranged kill. The amount of ammo returned can't exceed the normal clip size, but it can allow you to chain certain weapons with high killing power, like the sniper for example. One-shot kills will instantly chamber the next round. Bypassing the need to reload can be insanely powerful, and can let many single-shot weapons go berserk as long as you can keep the kills going. As for other weapons, it's still pretty good. It can load entire magazines worth of ammo at a time. Since the fill is based off of maximum ammo, trinkets that modify it actually synergize pretty well with it. The Ashen Mangrove normally loads 2.7 shells into the chamber on kill. This is rounded down to 2 shells for the sake of math. But by running equipment to double our maximum ammo pool, it becomes 5.4, rounding down to 5. It's a pretty nifty trinket, one I plan on running in the future for sure. Next up is the Jade Mirror. This necklace gives you a hyper-fast neutral dodge that costs double the stamina to reflect a third of the damage taken back to your enemies. This allows you to turn your neutral dodges into damage opportunities. The damage is unaffected by armor, so don't feel like you have to strip down to get the most out of the trinket. The reflection deals blowback damage, so it doesn't gain any damage from normal boosting sources. The only way to boost the damage on this trinket is to get a crit, corrode an enemy, or make yourself take more damage. One ring in particular actually synergizes incredibly well with this concept, the Ring of the Admiral. That 200% more damage taken buffs the hell out of your damage reflection. Certain enemy moves straight up one-shot them. This applies to bosses especially. Any hard-hitting move that they have can be turned against them and deal thousands of damage. Just make sure not to get hit, like, ever. An incredibly interesting new necklace to add to the roster. Moving on to the rings, we first have Bogo's Ring. This clown circlet grants you stacks upon dealing range damage. Every stack equates to 25% of the magazine's ammo that'll be converted to reserves on reload. This effect stacks 10 times, and the amount of stacks accumulated per shot varies based on the weapon you use similarly to the Onyx Pendulum. On single-shot weapons like the Sniper Rifle, you'll only ever get one bullet refunded, unless you also run Blood Oath or proc the Bandit Set Refund. This ring effectively gives you unlimited ammo reserves, so long as you can keep landing your shots. This effect even stays on Weapon Swap, meaning you can gain stacks on one weapon and then swap to the one you need ammo on. So long as you still have the ability to reload, you'll get all that ammo refunded. I recommend you try out the ring and see how you feel about it, Last up for the new additions, we have the Traveler's Ring. This ring is pretty basic, but helpful in traversal and in one-on-one -on -one boss fights. This ring grants a 20% movement speed buff and an 80% stamina cost reduction when there aren't two or more enemies within 20 meters of you. This ring helps a lot with roaming around, especially once you've cleared out an area. As for combat purposes, this can help out with stamina weapons such as the Mantis Claw or the Hero Sword. Should you be in the situation where there's only one target in a fight, you'll be able to spam those attacks and dodge roll like you're playing Dark Souls 3 with the straight sword. I'll definitely be using this ring in the future. And that's it for all the new major additions. As for some honorable mentions, I have a few changes here that are important enough to warrant mentioning. The Chunk Raider has received its rework, along with the beautiful new model, 
Its stats and mods have been completely redesigned. I'll be giving this gun its own video after this one, as I owe it the love it so it deserves. The Jolt Rifles mod has been altered. I'll go over it in a quick snippet later down the road. Some trinkets have also been rebalanced to not be as overtuned, like Band of Discord and Burden of the Lucid Dreamer. And that's it for now. Sorry for the long pause in content. I'll try my best to get back into the swing of things soon enough. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.